Discuss the behavioural approach to treating phobias. There are 12 marks available for the question. The mark scheme says that to achieve in the top mark band, the understanding of the behavioural approach to treating phobia should be evident and well explained. The information needs to be accurate and lots of detail needs to be provided. There then needs to be a discussion of the behavioural approach to treating phobias and this should include an evaluation to the consideration of the strengths and limitations of the treatments. And there should be a clear structure to the response and technical language should be used throughout and always in an appropriate way. And because this is a discussed question, we know that both AO1 knowledge and AO3 evaluation marks are available. There will be six AO1 marks and six AO3. The question is focused on the behavioural approach towards treating phobias and you should know and be able to recall that the two behavioural treatments for phobias are systematic desensitisation and flooding. Because the question is asking about the treatment of phobias, be prepared to include examples of phobias that could be treated using these methods. Let's take a look at this example response. Here, one material will be highlighted in blue and AO3 material will be highlighted in pink. Systematic desensitisation involves a gradual approach to treating phobias. Through classical conditioning, it aims to replace fear with relaxation. The individual creates an anxiety hierarchy, ranking feared situations from least to most anxiety-inducing. For example, if someone has aviophobia, a fear of flying, the least fear-inducing activity could be watching a video of a plane and the most could be travelling on a plane. They then learn relaxation techniques such as deep breathing. The individual is gradually exposed to the feared stimuli and works up the hierarchy, making sure they are in a relaxed state before moving to the next level. The individual becomes desensitised to the phobic stimulus, resulting in decreased fear and anxiety. This treatment can be easily personalised to the individual. It is very flexible and can be tailored to treat very specific fears. This allows the unique fears of each person to be addressed and the treatment to be effective. Because it takes a gradual approach, unlike flooding, it is often less traumatic. This reduces the levels of distress that people experience and it is more ethical. This can lead to a greater willingness to participate in the treatment. A limitation is that it needs a high level of cooperation from the person undergoing the treatment. Some people may find it challenging if they struggle with commitment or motivation, as it may take a long time to work through the hierarchy. This can delay progress and could make the treatment ineffective. Fudging works on the idea of treating a phobia through prolonged and immediate exposure. It immerses the individual directly into the feared situation or presents them with the phobic item. There is no build up to this and it happens very quickly. By overwhelming the phobic response, it aims to break down the association between the phobic stimulus and fear. For example, if someone had arachnophobia and was afraid of spiders, they could be put into a room full of spiders crawling around and even asked to hold a spider. A state of panic and fear will not be able to last forever and eventually the individual will calm down and should be able to cope being in the phobic situation. The phobic item would then be associated with these feelings of relaxation. A limitation of flooding is the potential for relapse. There is a risk that the phobia will reoccur as the person has not been equipped with coping mechanisms to manage the fear in the long term. If the underlying cause of the phobia is not addressed, then progress might not be seen and the person may relapse. A significant limitation of flooding is the high dropout rate. The intense nature of flooding can be overwhelming for some individuals and lead to an inability to continue with the treatment. As a result, the person will not receive the full benefits and it may be ineffective. The answer provides a really comprehensive overview of two behavioural treatments for phobias, systematic desensitisation and flooding. Each of these is taken in turn, described and then evaluated. This gives a real clear structure to the response. The response begins with the AO1 description of systematic desensitisation. Classical conditioning is explained as the mechanism behind the treatment, where fear is replaced with relaxation through gradual exposure 
to the feared stimuli. Specific examples, such as aviophobia, the fear of flying, are used to illustrate the process of creating an anxiety hierarchy and employing relaxation techniques. This use of specific phobias strengthens the description by showing how the treatment would be used in real life. Using examples is a great way to add further depth and detail to an answer. An evaluation of systematic desensitisation then follows. And you can see that two strengths have been given and one limitation. As always, note that an evaluation does not need to be equal. There doesn't need to be the same amount of strengths and limitations presented. But to make it balanced, there just needs to be the presentation of both strengths and limitations. You will see here that each of the evaluative paragraphs use a point explain consequence structure and this leads to the necessary depth needed to achieve in the top mark band. The first point identifies the strength of systematic desensitisation and the fact that it is very easily personalised. It is then explained and extended upon by talking about its flexibility and how it can be used to treat very specific fears. The consequence is then considered and it explains how this leads to effective treatment being able to be given. The second strength that is given is that it takes a gradual approach and there is a quick comparison to flooding. It explains that systematic desensitisation is less traumatic and therefore causes less distress and is therefore a more ethical treatment. The consequence is then given and it explains how people will then be more likely to willingly participate in the treatment and therefore, again, it becomes more effective. The limitation is then identified and this is the fact that individuals need to be highly cooperative for the treatment to be effective. It explains this point by outlining that some people may find the treatment extremely challenging and therefore, as a result, it can delay the progress and treatment again could be ineffective. The answer then moves back to AO1 material and gives a description of flooding. This is characterised by the immediate and intense exposure to the phobic stimulus, with the main aim of overwhelming the phobic response to break down that association between fear and the stimulus. Again, specific examples like arachnophobia are used to illustrate this process. This reinforces and illustrates further understanding by providing concrete instances of the treatment in action. The answer then returns to evaluation and gives the limitations of flooding. The first limitation is identified, and this is the potential for relapse. And this is then explained, explaining that people will not necessarily be equipped with the coping mechanisms to help them in the long term, and the consequence, the result, is that the phobia and its underlying causes may not be addressed and the person may relapse. A second limitation is then given and a point is made that there is a high dropout rate associated with flooding. This is explained, explaining and referring to the intense nature of flooding and how this can be overwhelming for some people and they may not be able to continue with the treatment. This is explaining why the dropout rate could be high. Finally, it then gives the consequence, as a result, the person will not receive the benefits of the treatment and it may be ineffective. Technical language is used consistently throughout the response. Terms include things like classical conditioning and anxiety hierarchy. These really help to convey the key concepts that are involved in behavioural psychology. They add precision and depth to the discussion and demonstrate a really clear understanding of the subject matter. So overall, the answer effectively describes and evaluates both systematic desensitisation and flooding as behavioural approaches to treating phobias. It includes specific examples to strengthen the explanations and employs a really structured approach to the evaluation.